what's going on? Welcome to the fourth video of our crash course on how to succeed in modern motion design and accelerate your career in animation. If you haven't watched the first three classes, I would recommend you to go back and watch them before you jump onto this one to get the most out of this crash course. In this class, we'll talk about another important animation principle that will instantly make your animation professional and add life and energy to whatever you animate going forward. It's follow through. Follow through is also known as overlapping action. This concept is again designed to mimic the way things move in real world. So what is it? When things move most of the time, the entire thing doesn't move together at the same time. Let's jump inside of After Effects and I'll show you what it is. So first, let me explain what is follow through. Put simply, it is the overlapping movement or overlapping action of parts of an object. Or maybe it's hard to understand the definition, but it's really easy when I show you what it is. So let me show you first what is follow through. First of all, I wanna animate this square here. Only the first one, this layer 12, and then I'm gonna add in a Y position. So this is where the square is gonna start moving. And then after 15 frames, go forward 15 frames, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna drag it up, it's gonna go up. And then another 15 frames, one, two, three, four, five. This is 15 frames. I'm going to drag it down like that. And then I'm just going to repeat, come up one, two, three, four, five, another 15 frames. I'm going to copy the last two keyframes, command C, and then paste it in where my timeline indicator is, command V. So go forward another 15 frames, one, two, three, four, five, and then paste it in again. Now I have a movement here. It's gonna go up and down and up and down. First of all, I wanna apply a default easing. Just right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then I'm gonna add in a anticipation at the beginning, maybe one, two, three, three frames. Let's go into the graph editor and then make sure we're in the value graph. Just double click on the Y position, fit the graph to view. I'm gonna add in the keyframe over here after three frames, command, hold down command on the keyboard, left click, add a keyframe, pull it up. So this is gonna be my anticipation. And then I'm gonna select all the keyframe here on top, drag these handles, just manipulate the spacing of the animation. Okay, that's it. Let's see what it looks like. That's good, that's what I want. And then what I wanna do is go back to this timeline, copy all the keyframe here, Command C, go to zero second, select all the other square, all the other square layers, and then Command V, paste in all of the keyframes. If I hit on U on the keyboard, you can see those keyframes are exactly the same. If I preview this, everything is gonna move all together at the same time. So you can treat these squares as one single object. And right now this one object, just like a, a bar that's moving up and down, oscillating up and down. Let me save the project. And then in this lesson, what we're gonna talk about is actually follow through. So the most basic version of follow through, it's just offsetting keyframes. You can also call it staggering animation, just like these little squares, if I just offset all these layers, maybe by two frames each. So if I go to my timeline here, so my layer 12 is the first square over there and then go for two frames, offset this one, two frames, off, offset the next one, another two frames, offset. And now you can see I've offset all these layers by two frames, one by one. And if I preview the animation, Let's see what it looks like now. All of a sudden, you can see it looks much more interesting and it's completely different from what we had before. Look at that. By offsetting all these keyframes, I've got a completely new animation and this is the most basic version of follow through. Just by staggering all these layers, you can get a different feel, different dynamic to this animation that you have. And remember I talked about the definition of follow through. It's the overlapping movement or 
overlapping action of parts of an object. So if you treat all these dots as one single object and these little squares are a portion of the, the whole object here and the animation right now is overlapping. So that's how we achieve follow through in the simplest way. Let's take a look at another example. So I only want to animate this middle part here. I've got this yellow bar and then I've got a box here, a animating line and then the happy line. So first, what I want to do is to animate this bar shooting up. Hit P for position, right click separate dimensions. I only want to animate in Y position. Just go to the zero second and then go for 15 frames, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, add in a Y position keyframe. This is going to be the final state of our bar and then go back to zero second, drag it down, something like that. And then select both F9, easy ease, go to the graph editor, make sure we're in the value graph, fit the graph to view and go back with three frames to add in a overshoot. Drag this overshoot over here. Make sure you drag these handles to manipulate the spacing. Go back to the keyframe view. Let's see the animation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this overshoot is too much. Let's pull it back a little bit. Something like that. Okay, cool. All right. And another thing is, since we want to demonstrate follow through and Remember follow through is the overlapping action on parts of an object. And right now we only have one object. How do we use follow through? So for a bar or a block like this, we can actually use to add more points on this shape and then we can manipulate the shape. So what we want to do is go to the hit on this arrow here and then go to content, go to group, go to path and then add a keyframe on the path. So the pass is going to be a rectangle when it lands on here, which is the final state of this bar. But then when it's animating going up, what we can do is go to this pen tool over here, up here, go to pen tool and then choose this add vertex tool. I can add two points on this rectangle and then I can manipulate the shape of this uh, rectangle. Let's say if I want to make this rectangle thinner and then drag these two points up as if this center is where the force is coming from and then the center is going to go forward first dragging the left and right wing of this rectangle to go up also i want to go use this convert vertex tool hit on this uh, line here drag a smooth curve here instead of a sharp like angle now i have a curve here so what i want to do is when it comes up from zero second drag this keyframe back to zero it should come up something like this. And then I also want it to overshoot. So for the overshoot, maybe drag it back because I want this bar to be pretty thin when it's traveling up. And then when it overshoots over there, I want this one, I want these two points to come down. Still need a curve here. Go up and down and then settle. However, when it settles, I need another overshoot to have these two points down like that before it reaches the final position. Swings back like that. And then let's right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, go to the graph editor. Since we're manipulating the path of an object and this path doesn't have a value graph to be honest. So in this case, we even if you're selecting value graph, it's still going to show you speed graph. In this case, we cannot use value graph anymore, but so all we want to do is to drag these handles to give our animation more speed, something like this, to give it more energy. And let's see what we have here. Now you can see our bar has some character to it. It's not a boring bar anymore. It's got some character. It's pretty fun. It's interesting to look at. It's like a noodle bar or something. And I'm happy with this animation. However, I still haven't offset anything yet. Right now, the path animation is still aligned with the position property. So what we want to do is we need to offset the keyframe for the path. All we need to do is to drag the path forward, maybe two frames, one, two, let's try three frames. Drag the path forward three frames. 
so that everything is offset by three frames. And that gives you an illusion that when the bar comes up, there is a delay in response for the transformation of the shapes. So let's see what we have now and see if it makes sense. Yeah, it gives you more of a natural feeling. Now I've gone ahead to animate the other elements with follow through. Let's take a look. That's what we have. It's pretty fun and happy, I guess. And that's another example of how you can apply follow through to your animation. Follow through can get much more complex than this, but the basic idea is extremely simple to execute. And it will add instant visual appeal to almost any animation. And now you know how to do it. Come to think of it, you actually know quite a lot. You can compare these two animations here. The first one is animated without the principle of follow through. And the second one is animated with follow through. You can tell the difference. The second one with follow through is looking instantly better and much more appealing. So these animation principles are the underlying differences that separates the professionals from the amateurs. If you're looking to become a professional animator and want to choose motion design as your career, you gotta learn these concepts and skills to give yourself a better chance of winning high paying jobs and big budget clients. If you know how to apply these principles onto your animation and bring anything you touch to life, there's nothing stopping you from getting that 80K animation studio job or even freelancing remotely for like 100K plus per year. All you need is to step outside of your comfort zone to learn these animation secrets and these will help you make the breakthrough in your career. That's it with this lesson. In the next video, I'll talk about the industry in general and why it's an incredible time to add motion design to our toolkit and how to get a job or freelance as a motion designer. If you want to watch the last video of the series, please click on the link in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more of this great content. Happy animating!